My name is Mark. I'm back with Dave. We're here to talk about a kick-ass win over the Suns, bro. There's so many things that went wrong, and then so many things that went so right. Yeah, you know, and and it was was crazy because as the game was developing, it was great to watch as these guys were recognizing what they were supposed to do out there. And a lot of it comes back down to the coaching and and Coach D recognizing who uh, was going to be able to be out there and play. And the first indication that I knew that things were going right for him with Coach D was when he put Lindy Waters out there. And Lindy Waters started dominating on both sides of the floor. It was like, okay, you know what? Coach D's got this thing going down now. He's figured out a person. I wonder if he's going to use Lindy Waters in that fourth quarter. And he did. But the person that fourth quarter that really stood out was that that um, Aaron Wiggins, man. Like, he really did everything for that win. And we can say, we can circle anybody you want about the 40-point win or a point uh, drop by uh, Shea or – or George's 20-point uh, piece. And you could do this or that, but the reality is is that when Wiggins came out and raised the bar like he did, everybody else came to the occasion. Everybody else stepped up. And after that, it was over. Yo, Wiggins had a great fourth quarter, like you mentioned. Great play by Lindy Waters. He was a defensive maestro out there. He had three mm-hmm. massive defensive plays I can think of where he just ch- turned the, the game around where they were going to make a bucket, and now we were running in transition. And we did very well scoring it in transition. But then, like you mentioned, we went to Wiggins, and I heard Coach talking about going to Wiggins, and he said he wanted to save going switching one through five until the fourth quarter because if you give a team that look early in the third quarter, then they're going to come out and they're going to adjust. So he saved that, he kept it in his pocket, and then boom, he sprung Wiggins out there, and then they started switching one through five. That gave enough of a wrinkle on the defensive end, and we saw what Wiggins was able to do, getting out there, running in transition, getting stops, scoring buckets. Yeah, I mean, it's easy to point to these guys and say, like, these role players are playing great. Well, and then we're missing Shea's 40-point game. But the reality is we always say this, and it's the reason we're going to overemphasize it, is this. We want stars who are role, role players who are stars in their role. We need more than one of those guys. And when their number is called, and like Coach Degnault said, these guys have now been trained to know they may not play, but to stay ready. And when they can stay ready, that really lends itself well to a seven-game series. Yeah, and it's what we've been saying all along. Everybody's been uh, talking about uh, Coach D and his his um, um, substitutions and stuff like that. A lot of people that don't understand really what's going on with it uh, have a lot of opinions about it. But the reality is, is by doing what he's doing, it's, it's, it's conditioning your team, right? It's conditioning your team to exactly what you need and where your weaknesses as a coach, you are getting covered by your players. And to, for Coach D to recognize that and be able to position his team like that is truly spectacular. In that fourth quarter, well, let's just start. I mean, mm-hmm. like that first half, man, that was rough first half. Like that, we were down 12 going into halftime. I felt like we were in an uphill um, battle. Sabbath, one of our um, uh, daily listeners, man, uh, he was talking about just how uh, – not Sabbath, I'm sorry. Um, I don't remember who it was, but he was on our uh, list saying that he wrote all of his friends saying, get on this, guys. you got to start watching this game. We're down 12. And he started telling everybody to watch the game because that's the reality is when you start believing that this team can do something, right, you start recognizing that 12 points isn't enough against us. It doesn't matter who we're playing against. It's not enough. And then you start believing, right? And then you start feeling that that heart rate, right? And you're like, guys, this is the game. This is the game to watch because if you're going to watch this team do something special, the Suns game is the beginning of that. And listen, we got a really nice stretch coming up. We got two against the um, uh, Clippers and one against LA. And then we have a bunch of games that we need to win. And if we can win two of the next three games, bro, we're putting ourselves in a position to really go what we talked about that that uh, 16 and four record that we need to circle and try to get to, because that means we could get to the top six. That's insane. And we have that opportunity right now because we're only what a game back from seven game back from our game and a half back from six. This is nothing. Yeah. We got to look at it and say, if we can go 500 the rest of the way or one game above 500 and we end up at 500 on the season, we're going to make it to the play in game. Now, how that's going to work out, whether or not will work out, that's all up in the air. But I think at this point, Unless we, you know, fail to live up to the 500 at the end of the season, then we will be in the play-in. The question is now, like you're saying, can we move up a couple more spots? As of today, we're, I think we're fit, sitting at the eighth seed, and we're one game back from being able to get into that seventh seed, which is really like a great goal. But in the end, the sixth seed is where you can skip the play-in. That might feel a little bit greedy for a lot of us, but let's face it, this Suns game really opened our eyes because. We saw them take so many punches. The Suns had the game 
really where they wanted it. They were up by Completely. 10, 12, 14 points in, late in the third quarter. We put on a little flurry, but then to start out the fourth quarter, bro, we fell back down by 10 again. So they had what they wanted, but we started finding some grooves. We find, found some things like we mentioned many times already, Wiggins getting out there, but also Shea coming back. Um, they, we got going downhill. Bro. We started getting out in transition. What's up, bro? No, no, I was just echoing, bro. Yeah, you're right. We, yeah, we were able to find what we wanted. Dort continued to stay hot. He was hot all game, and his shot was falling. Bro, this was a team win, but really, you got to look at like the maturation of the team. You got to look at what Coach you know, mentioned. is like a lot of these games in the past, we would kind of let go of the rope for a minute. Next thing you know, we'd find ourselves down 18 or 20 points, and that's much, much more difficult. We didn't do that. We stayed in it, and then the game, the tide changed. Shea started making some of the shots that were more difficult. We were playing a little bit more space. We understood how to attack their defense. We knew what they were doing. And then we started throwing some wrinkles, do that three-quarter court trap that we were using to get the ball out of Booker's hand so he couldn't just bring it up and initiate the offense. There were so many different little wrinkles I haven't seen yet. So it makes me think this team it still has another gear. Oh, yeah, dude. This team is not close to peaking yet for the season. And, and, I, and I say that with all due respect to the rest of the NBA. Um, what we watched from Coach D and how he was able to get those gear, gears up for those guys, recognizing that nothing was was working, nothing besides Dort and, and Shea were, were out there scoring consistently. And, and yes, we had some other guys that were pitching in, but on a consistent basis, we weren't getting anything else. And I, I, I look at that and I, and I see Coach D saying, okay, if we're going to win this game, we got to do something special. You know, assistant coaches, let's get in here. Let's brainstorm. We got one quarter to put this together. You know, Shea comes out of the game. You know, the Suns go ahead and, and, and up that score, uh, that lead again. And then all of a sudden, uh, out of nowhere, we go on this crazy run. And it was an 18-2 to two run. And that, what was it, the, almost the entire time Shea was on the bench for that run? I mean, he came back into the very end of that run. But, but the, the point is, is that we can say it was Shea that, that did this, right? But it was Coach D that was able to coach the guys and say, we need to do this trap. We need to do this. We need to do this. We need to do this. These are the three things that we need to change in order for us to win this game. It doesn't matter about Shea. It doesn't matter about Shea right now. It's about you guys. You guys going out there and laying your hearts on the um, on the line and doing whatever it takes because that's the reality where this team is at, man. We're not going to get any wins unless all these guys are out there balls to the wall. And they all know it now. You mm -hmm. know, they, they all know that we can't just sit back and hope that Shea scores 40 and, and Dort scores 20 and, you know, uh, a couple other guys scoring the teens here and there. Like, we can't always expect that. Like, every single one of those buckets last night were hard-fought hard buckets. Yeah. Every single one of them. They were not, there was no easy things. There was nothing easy. The refs weren't calling stuff, and, and there was a lot of physical contact down there. We didn't get any calls, but guess what happened? Coach D got fired up. Mm -hmm. Josh Giddy got fired up. Got a couple and we tees. all got fired up, and they all got technicals. And we, we, had, we saw back to back tees. Of, and that really yeah. was a, a spark, wasn't it? It was because, I mean, as much as it happened at, what, the third quarter, mm -hmm. like there was a moment that, that y you saw Josh and Coach D kind of like look at each other, you know, like you got this, you know, like we got this, you know, like like it was like Josh was like upset because, yes, there should have been called a goaltending. Yes, it was very intense. Um, and But he needs to recognize that Coach D is going to get that technical for him. He doesn't need to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, that's what's so great about it. It was like, yes, Josh got the technical and coach. He's like, fuck it. I don't give a shit. Fuck you. You got that call wrong. T. You know what I'm saying? Like yep. that was coach D saying, Josh, you don't need to do that. I was going to do that, man. Yeah. <laughs> and guess what? He hits both technical fouls and then misses both free throws. So it all worked out. Yeah. that was, Bayambo missed. He airballed that first free throw so bad. It was pretty incredible. Um, but as the game went on, bro, we really saw like a different side of, of a player that's been playing really well, but J-Dub was not able to get his offense going this game whatsoever. But when it Rough. came down to it, man, he went up and got a couple of rebounds that were really critical because we could defend for 24 seconds, but if we didn't secure a rebound, they were just going to shoot it till they made it. And when he got those rebounds, it felt like, look, we understand what it takes to win the game. Everybody out on the court put everything behind them. It didn't matter if they were playing good or bad. And they understood the objective to win this game is to get the ball. And they laid it all out on the court. And when you see that maturity, once again, we, we want those 
role players who are stars in their role. But the reality is sometimes, right, a star like J-Dub has to be like locked into being a role player to help the team win. That's what we saw with great players like Scottie Pippen and different guys like that. Dennis Rodman, they understood how to be stars, but Kobe they also... Was, had... when Shaq was going off. Right, and that's that's what we saw with J-Dub, is he understood we were still in it, and he could help the team win, and it didn't matter if he wasn't having a good game, the team could win the game. And you saw him walk off the court with a smile on his face, and honestly, it was because we won. Yeah, he had five points, uh, five assists, two steals, one block, and uh, mm-hmm. ten rebounds. Uh, he should have more assists, but the reason he didn't have more assists is because Shea went to the free throw line 19 times. You know, so if you think about that, guys, and you think about the fact that J Dub was understanding what his role was in this game, in particular, is is what's key. You know, like a, a superstar isn't somebody that's going to go out there and score 35 points in every single game. A superstar is going to go out there and 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 score 25 points, but they hit the game winner. That's going to score 25 points, but grab you know, 10 rebounds when he needs to. That'll score 10 points if he needs to and, and, and pull 14 rebounds and, and dish it out 10 times. Like, j Dub's going to do whatever it takes to fill in that hole. He took shit, six shots last night. Most of them were driving to the hole and getting to the hole. And then that fourth quarter, Coach D called him out, man. He's like, get to that fucking hole, you know? And he did. And he got to the hole, and he was able to get to the free throw line. And this is the, the whole reason of what's happening right here is that you look at this team and you say, how did we win this game? We only had 20 assists last night. We did not get a lot of assists. It's because we we were getting fouls um, called going to the free throw line. So we, you know, took all those assists away that we would have gotten, right? And then we start looking at it like, okay, uh, uh, what else do we do not do very well? We, you know, we got eight steals, right? We had 15 turnovers, right? 15 turnovers, guys. They had 14 turnovers, okay? But this is what we did so spectacular with the 15 turno- or, uh, 14 turnovers that they had, right, guys? Guess how many points we had out of that 14 turnovers? 34. Think about that, guys. Yeah. We had 34 points off of 14 turnovers. Okay? That's insane. That's insane. Like, that means we probably scored every single time that we we got the ball off of turnover. And if that's if you're a coach on the other side, there's nothing that's more frustrating than that, man, is when you're doing things right to win ball games, but the team is just getting these easy buckets that are getting the easy threes, that are getting the steals, that are getting this, that are getting that. And making their life easier. Because every single time we got a steal, man, I felt like we we're fast breaking it. Mm-hmm. You know, every single time that Jay, uh, Jay Will got a, a charge or uh, got an illegal screen going the other way for Dor or Shea, bro, we were going downhill every single time. And that goes back to the coaching. It goes back to understanding what Coach D is trying to do with his team. And that's the beautiful thing about this big picture is that this team isn't close to peaking. Right. And any way you want to look at it, this team – is still trying to find out who they are. But guess what they believe? I said it last episode, and I say it now. They believe in themselves. And when you believe in yourself, that's the most powerful thing out there. And these guys are playing like they believe in who they are. Absolutely, man. We competed for 48 minutes. We got it done in a game where Booker and Shea went dueling 40-point games, bro. Nothing Sanity. else better than watching this young team come into their own, bro. I'm pumped up, and I appreciate everybody joining us. Guys, if you want to listen to our last video about – Coach Chip England and why we think he's been touched by the hand of God. Right there, guys. Right there. Do it.